I just gouged my hand on an old pocket knife. I like opened it too close. Like I, I was holding it like up here and I think I like caught my hand in between this little area and like gouged a chunk. Like surprisingly deep. Like I didn't think it had that much force, but it did. It kind of surprised me. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna talk about knives today. I get a lot of. I'm, I'm gonna try YouTube for the summer. I figured this will be a good starting video. We're kind of in a recession right now, in uh, spring here. It was in like the 70s. Everyone was getting ready. We all thought spring was coming. And I, even though I know from past experience that Minnesota like w spring always just goes from like hot to cold to hot to cold. I still was hoping, like I was really hoping, and even the weather forecast supported my belief that like it was going to hit 70s, and then it was going to get cooler again, like in the 50s, but then it was supposed to stay there. That's what the weather said. And I was really hoping, hey, spring is here, and we can all, you know, get started. Like everyone was moving, the whole town had woken up, uh, but that was not the case. And it snowed like half a foot over the weekend, and now it's supposed to snow another like foot. And so, and it's, it'll all melt within a week again. But that's just another week that no one feels like going outside because we're all tired of winter by now. And we were hoping that spring was here. Um, but I figured during this period, it'd be a good time to like try and get some equipment out of the way, like do some gear videos and how I maintain my stuff. Because that's what a lot of people ask me about that. And like, it's much easier to go in depth on a platform like YouTube and like cover this stuff in detail than it is on TikTok. Plus making TikToks is exhausting. Like, with the algorithm, it feels like I, like, when I make a video, it's like I have to be, like, this the whole time to just keep everyone's attention. I always have to be doing something amazing in order to keep anyone's attention. If I just want to, like, make a video about my gear or if I just want to, like, tell my audience something, the algorithm doesn't want me to on TikTok. Like, it doesn't let me. It doesn't trend unless I'm doing something really amazing. So it's just, this is a far better platform for just, like, interacting with my audience. This It's feeling tingly now. It's kind of, when I'm throwing my hand around it feels weird but oh well um so yeah i figured i'd start with knives because it's a topic i kind of i own more knives than i should and i know a lot more about them than any person needs to and it's been like i, I started collecting knives kind of obsessively since i was when i was like 15 onwards and then i just found hobbies along the way to justify my obsession with knives so i probably i think i own some are close to like between 80 and 100 knives and I'm trying to get rid of most of them now because, again, nobody needs that many. I'm keeping, like, 20 of them in a duffel bag, just off, like, just off screen. And the rest are piled at my cabin, and I'm just waiting to, like, give them away at a garage sale or something. Um, and, like, maybe try and make, like, a third of the cost back on it, I guess. Or just find someone, like, even if I just give them away to someone who I know will use the knife, I just don't want to throw them away because that would be a waste. Um... But the 30 or 20 I've kept, I'll like show you guys and I'll tell you about this seven year journey because I'm 22 now. So it's been like seven years of collecting these knives. I figured with all that I've learned over this, this time, I can inform you guys and save you guys the trouble so that you don't have to go through the whole journey. Because I think there is kind of a, when you get into it, you, you pick the shiny stuff and then eventually you realize it's kind of crap and then you pick the stuff that works. And I've already done all that so I can save you guys the trouble and just give you my opinion on all of it and, you know, what's good for what. Because I think no one ever considers the purpose of a knife. It's always really annoyed me. Like the other day, I wanted to buy this knife. It's a Keppert style old hickory for like 30 bucks. Like a fairly cheap knife. This is actually on the expensive end of old hickory. They're usually like $20. But I, I was just trying to look up to like YouTube reviews about it to see if it like did its intended purpose well. Which is, it's a bird and trout knife. Like it's right there on the title when you look it up at Amazon. It says, Kepart like style, old hickory, bird and trout knife. And yet every single review I ever looked up, everyone was like, ooh, look, new Kepart style knife, really cool, let's make a feather stick. And then that's like all they would do with the video. I'm like, sure, if you want to see if the knife makes a feather stick, that's good to know. But it's a bird and trout knife. And like, I didn't find a single video in which anyone actually used it for its intended purpose. It's a hunting knife. You know, it's not even supposed to be like a, a wood cutting or camp knife. And it can do those things. Like the Kepart style was meant to be pretty well-rounded. But like it's supposed to be a hunting knife and not a single person used it on any sort of meat so i don't know. I, I just figured i can cover these things more in depth and i will um and I, this would be a good starter video so without further ado i've already talked far longer than i needed to um let's let's do it i'll start with pocket knives 
because I think that's where everyone starts. Especially if you're like not that obsessed with knives, if you just want one to like open boxes occasionally with and like maybe cut some paracord when you're out camping. Like I feel like everyone starts with a pocket knife that they use on boxes more than anything else. And I had a lot growing up. I always had a knife on me. Ever since I was like 12, I've carried a knife on me like every day. The only place they didn't allow it was school, which always annoyed me. Um, but I would, I would recommend like pocket knives. I've used them to the point where I've lost them, but I've also used them to the point where they just break on me after like two years. Like most of the pocket knives I've had never last past like two years. They're like really poorly built. Like you average, like, like the knives you see when you look up on Amazon, like I, I think one of the first things I always see anyone's trying to get into knives for the first time, it's, it's the tactical industry. It's kind of a plague on the whole outdoor industry in general is anytime anyone looks up anything related to the outdoors. There's tactical in all capitals, pasted everywhere you look. And, you know, everything's tactical. You got to get all the tactical stuff. And those are just gimmicks. Like, generally, they're very cheap, shitty products. Like, some pocket knife you get with, like, the glass breaker on the end. And it's got, like, a half serrated blade and, like, some really dumb-looking curve at the end. And it, it, the handle's, like, got this weird design in it that makes it, like, super wide for some reason and way heavier than it needs to be. And it says tactical everywhere. And, you know, it's a tactical knife in case you are you drive your car off a bridge into a lake and you need to break the window and then stab three assailants on your way out. Like that knife, the tactical pocket knife. And generally they're shit. They have a terrible curve on the blade. The half serrated thing, which actually the half serrated thing has its purpose. But again, in a niche environment, which is like a utility knife, which I'll get into later. But those knives, I would say avoid them. Because not only will they fall apart fast, they're just crap. They're way heavier than they need to be. It's never a good steel that holds its edge for very long. A good general brand I would suggest for a pocket knife is Kershaw. Like, they will sell more expensive knives in, like, the $50 to $70 range, but you can get plenty of their knives for, like, 20 bucks. And they're typically, like, I would suggest a, a stainless steel for just your average pocket knife. Because then, you know, if you get wet, if you fall in a lake, if it starts waning, if you're as reckless as I am, you don't need to worry about it rusting as much. Because, like, even if it does rust, it'll be very minimal, and you can just wipe it off generally. And you don't have to worry about it as much. It doesn't hold an edge as long, but I don't think most people need to be concerned about that because, again, they're just using it to open boxes and shit like that. Like, it's a utility knife. And I think a utility knife definitely has a place, and it should be stainless steel, and just get a, a brand that generally works. I typically carry a multi-tool. I don't even carry a pocket knife very often anymore because I just find a multi-tool has more stuff on it, and it still has a knife. Um, but I still have plenty of them lying around. So I think that's where most people start, and I would generally stick to those tips. And then when you get, when you really know what you want, after you've used them for a few years, you can buy something much more specialized. Like I found this at an antique store. It's just a really big pocket knife that I think is funny because it's absurd. Um, I, li I like to just keep it in like a coat pocket or in a pants pocket. And then when I'm like out with friends and they're like, hey, does anyone have a knife? Like my friends always know that I have a knife. So they t generally just look to me and ask if I have a knife and I'll be like, oh, sure. Here you go. Like, it's just way bigger than it needs to be, and it's funny, and I got it for, like, $6, so. But the knife I actually carry when I do carry a pocket knife is this. It's an Open L number, size number 9, carbon steel. And carbon steel is not very rare. It, it's not very common in a pocket knife. It's pretty rare. And I prefer carbon steel for almost everything these days. I you, I keep stainless steel for, like, a U for like a multi-tool and like a utility knife that I'll keep in my pocket when I'm just roaming around or I'm working at my job. But every other knife, I typically want to have carbon steel. It just holds an edge so much longer. And if you put a patina on there, you don't really have to worry about the rust as much. And it's not that hard to take care of them. Like, it really isn't. People get worried about it, but those same people are like people who just like are proud of the, fa of the fact that they're lazy. They're like, oh, carbon steel? That stuff rusts and I don't know how to take care of it. And they're like proud of it at the end of the sentence. And I'm like, are you bragging right now? Like, what? Anyway. Uh, I, and a lot of these knives, I, like, modify myself a little bit. Like, I'll sand down the handle and add my own finish. I did the same thing to this one. I, I sanded down the handle, made it much more round, and I added... I, I typically add boiled linseed oil or teak oil to my knives because it adds a nice finish that I think is weather-resistant. I prefer oils in general. I don't like to add, like, lacquer or other finishes that, like, flake off. I add an oil that penetrates into the wood, makes it decently water-resistant. 
and it's just a lot more versatile and flexible, and it feels better on your hands than some, like, shiny, waxy, slippery finish. And these, these Open-L knives come in a number of sizes, so you can have a choice in which size you prefer. You can get carbon steel or stainless, and they, they lock, which is a pretty good feature to have on a pocket knife. Like, it's not as strong as a fixed blade, but it still locks. It's one less thing you have to worry about. So I really, I like these. This is what I use most nowadays. It's a very customizable knife that you can further customize after you get it home. Like I sanded down the handle and then finished it myself. Stuff like that. That's, you know, that's deep in the, the pocket knife world, but I think people spend too much time on pocket knives anyway. If you really that into knives, you probably just have like a fixed blade of some sort. Next, I wanted to talk about multi-tools, like your Leatherman or uh, Swiss Army knife or... The cheap like pliers you have in the fishing box that also have like other tools on them um i personally stick to leatherman and swiss army knife i think that swiss army knife now makes like all their multi-tools with pliers on them that i think are pretty reliable but i've never had one so i don't know for sure i can't vouch for it but i prefer leatherman just because it's the best design, I think. It's the most robust. It's the most trusted. It's the most widely used. It has the most kinks worked out. Um, I actually have, or I did have, four separate Leathermans. I only bought two of them myself, and the other two were gifted to me. Um, I have a Super Tool 300. I had a Skeletool, which is actually my favorite, and I, I think it's somewhere in this room. I'm hoping when I move out in a month I can find it, because it's the one I usually carry with me every day. It's my favorite combination. It has, like, the perfect combination of things that I use the most often. Um, and that half serrated blade on it, like, it has the half serrated, half regular knife. I always hated those things growing up because they never had any purpose. But as a utility knife, like, when you're working, like, I was head of maintenance at my camp. Um, and that was, it was hugely helpful when you're, like, cutting a ton of rope or cutting a ton of boxes all the time. Like, I was always dealing with trash bags and plastic and boxes and the serrated edge on that but then still having like a normal knife blade as a utility knife was extremely useful and i miss it i, I hope i find it and that's my favorite is the skeletal i don't have it again right now but it's like not only one of the cheapest it's one of the most minimalist it has the clip on it so you can just clip it to a belt loop and then there's like no way you can lose it either like the only reason i lost it in here is because i think i like knocked it off a table or something i really don't know where it is i'm hoping i find it because I don't have to buy a new one, and I've had that one for like three or four years now. Um, it's got a lot of like character to it from all the different adventures I've been on, so I really hope I find it. But that's my favorite. I have a, a Surge, which I don't typically carry with me because it's just bigger and bulkier than I need. Um, and it also weighs like two pounds at least, it feels like. Like it's just, it's heavy and it's big. And like I don't need that much in a multi-tool personally. Um, but a lot of people do swear by this. They love this thing. And I can see where it would be, again, like in a construction role or something, in like a, when you're working with your hands on like a ranch or something, this would be very useful when you need something robust. I use it more, I just keep it like at my desk and then I use it when I need to do something random in my room. Um, and this was a gift to me. The other one I have that I use the most often is in this little pouch I carry on my waste all the time. If you've seen my TikTok, you probably have seen this hanging from my waist at some point. I keep a lighter and a flint rod in there, but then I also keep my second most used after the Skeletool is, uh, this is the only other one I've bought. Um, the, the Super Tool 300 that I keep in my car now when I need a multi-tool in my car, that one was a birthday gift for me on like my 16th or 17th birthday. And then the Surge was another birthday gift I got when I was like 19, I think. But I bought this one and the Skeletool um, because I liked their designs a ton. This is the Curl. Um, it's perfect for me. Like, I looked at this design, and it's actually probably one of the least popular models that Leatherman makes. But to me, it's perfect for the outdoors and, like, for what I do. It has the awl, which I actually used. I was on a backpacking trip. I was leading. I was, I was the leader for my camp for a 10-day backpacking trip to Iroyal. And my backpack strap broke. Like, in the middle, it just tore in half. When I still had like three days left to hike. When I used the awl on this thing and some paracord to like sew it back together and it lasted the rest of the hike, I still have the backpack. Um, and I don't, like I don't take it on trips anymore because I don't know if it's going to hold up, but it did hold up for three more days. So I used the awl on that already. 
it's got the pl the screwdriver on it with double bits, which I always end up using to like tighten my axe handles when I'm in the field or whatever else. And then it's got scissors, which are surprisingly useful uh, when I need to like, like sometimes I, I do sewing, I do my own clothing repair, and the scissors are very helpful for that. It's got the flathead screwdriver, but I use that like a, as like a, a pry bar more often, honestly. It's really nice for like wedging into things and like pulling them open. Um, and it makes a nice like chiseled edge and even like a flat edge to strike flint with. I could probably do it right now since my it's sitting right here. Like it's got a nice, if I can, maybe not. I know one of these sides works. I, I've used it before. Yeah, right there. If you can see that. You can throw sparks with it. You can like scrape stuff with it. Like it's really nice flat edge. It, it's got a lot of uses. And then uh, it's got a can opener when you want to open a can. And then on the outside, it's got the pliers, which are needle nose, which is perfect. Again, when I'm out in the woods, I want needle nose pliers. And then it's got the knife blade, which obviously you want a knife. It's, I think you should always have a backup knife. I always carry two knives with me out into the woods. It's, I think it's important if you lose one or break one. Um, and then it's got this diamond file on it, which I actually use to sharpen my tools in the field. Like if I get a ding in them or if I, they just need to be sharpened, like my saw, I sharpen my saw with this. So like I have used already and use often every single tool on this. And to me, it's like perfect. It's got no tools I don't want and it's got every tool I do. It's perfect for being out in the woods. So the curl is the one I always carry with me in the woods and the skeletal is the one I always carry around when I'm just like working at my job or like just a, a normal day out. And I'd show you guys the skull tool, but again, don't know where it is. Hope I find it. Um, anyway, now it's time to get into fixed blades, I think. Which is, uh, well, actually, I forgot. Swiss Army knife. I've had this one since I was like, maybe 11 or 12. I honestly don't know. Um, and I think a Swiss Army knife is always good to like throw in like an, I keep them in like little Altoids tins with like nail clippers and like tweezers and other stuff. I think it's just good to have one on you. I like using the little tweezers and, and toothpicks that it comes with. I have used this to open wine bottles and other stuff. You never know when you want a corkscrew, honestly. Like, it's just handy. To, I think it's handy to have one around. But honestly, I could, like, I would be just fine without it. But I think they definitely have a place. And for how sleek and small they are, you know, throw it in a pocket, throw it in a backpack. It's just good to have on you. Uh, genuinely. So. Anyway, now we'll get into the fixed blades. Another thing worth mentioning is that of the like 80 to 100 knives that I have, probably like almost three quarters of them or like three fifths of them, the majority of them are like $1 kitchen knives that I got at a thrift store because there was this thrift store, antique store thing called Toss and Found at the summer camp that I worked at. And in, the, in one section of the store, they had all these drawers filled with like old knives and they were like 30 cents. 50 cents, a dollar a piece. And some of them are like really fun. Like just having a cleaver for the novelty value always sounded kind of fun for me. And it was like $2, so I bought it, of course. Who wouldn't, you know? Like that's just a crime of passion right there. Um, so that is the, like a lot of them I have are just one to $2 kitchen knives that I bought because they looked fun. And like, I, I would, I, I like to buy cheap knives as just throwing knives sometimes. Like, I was, I, I've always been really into throwing knives. I, I've always really enjoyed it. It's kind of fun. And uh, if you can just pick up, like, a $2 knife at a thrift store and then throw it around. You don't have to worry if it dents or breaks or gets fucked up because it was, like, a dollar, you know? So that is, like, a lot of the knives I own are just that. That are their, like, kitchen knives, again, that I, you know, bought because they were really cheap. But in terms of, like, actual, like, fixed blade knives for like going out into the woods um over many years i i did at one point buy into like all the tactical everything was like kevlar and like kydex and micarta and uh carbon steel with like a finish on it and, like all the becker sc you know gerber um k bar like every you know basically they're sharpened crowbars. I, I don't remember who, like, coined that term, but I always thought it was really accurate. Like, they're super nice knives, but it's like a, it's a sharpened crowbar. I mean, look at this thing. It's, 
And I love this. This is the BK9. It's a K-Bar Becker BK9. This was, I got this when I was like 17. I still use this all the time. And these definitely have a place. If you're actually like a woodsman, you probably don't use it. But like, I always carry this into the woods with me. We used to clear trails at my old job. We would maintain the trails for like the horses and all the campers and everyone. And I would just keep this like on the back of my hip and like a scout carry like back here. And then I would just pull it out. And like, it was great. It's basically a machete, but more versatile. And I could like bushwhack my way through and just clear trails. It was super easy to have on my back and I didn't have to carry like a whole ax or like garden shears or something. So they definitely have a place. Um, and they're really fun to have. And I suggest, you know, owning at least one. It's really fun. But they are sharpened crowbars at the end of the day. And you really don't need a knife that big. And if you're doing any actual detail work, again, really don't need it. And a lot of them have coatings on them that can be kind of annoying. And then they start to peel off anyway when you use them. And it kind of looks ugly. And, like, then you don't really want to use them on, like, anything food related or anything like that. So I usually just remove the coating myself on most of these. I have, this is a, I think this one's the 18. BK18 or something. Yeah, 18. I'm right right there on the blade. And again, I, I carry these two as a pair. I carry this one for the big bushwhacking and then this one's for like fine detail work if I actually need to do any. Um, and it's just a fun little thing to have, but I just have those more of as a hobby. I don't ever really need those. Again, this one has its place and is very handy, but I don't need it. But generally, if you're actually like a serious woodsman, I would suggest steering away from those big sharpened crowbars and from like the classics. Like everyone, you know, you, you always meet hobbyist woodsmen, and they've, oh, they've always got, like, a Gerber strong arm is really popular, or the classic K-Bar. And this is a fighting knife. Like, as cool as it is, and as it's a really versatile knife that's known for getting people through all kinds of situations, but at the end of the day, it's meant to kill people. It's not really meant to do any actual detail work or anything fine. Um, like, it's meant to stab people with. Like, that's the intended purpose of the knife. And bringing it out into the woods to try and do everything else with, while it's fun and stylish... It's not actually that effective. Most of the knives I have now that I actually use have a wood handle, a leather sheath, and they're carbon steel on the inside. Like every knife that I use regularly pretty much hits those criteria. And most of them are not longer than four inches. I find that's the most usable length. I used to prefer six inches. I liked a little extra length, but I honestly found those bigger knives are you don't need that extra distance for anything. Like if it's a fighting knife like this and you're trying to stab people with it, then sure, you want those extra inches to kill people effectively. But most of you aren't killing people. So honestly, a four inch, three inch knife will do you just fine. This is my, by far my most used regular belt knife. This is my carving knife. I had it handmade for me. If you have the money and if, you're, if you do this as much as I do, I would say get a handmade knife and custom order it to whatever you want. Like this is more or less a four inch puko style knife i chose all the handle materials myself it was custom made for me it's carbon steel it holds an edge forever and it's so nice and i love the curve on this knife it's perfect for carving and i have this knife on my belt practically every day i don't use it for anything else because i get all kinds of stuff on it when i'm carving out there like all kinds of gunk on this knife and i don't want to put that on my food if I wash it off, it could do food just fine, but it's a little thicker than I need. Like, it just doesn't do food that well. You could, like, skin an animal with it or something, but, like, it wouldn't fillet a fish that well, and it wouldn't chop a potato that well. Whereas this knife, I generally have my carving knife, a utility knife, like a multi-tool, like the one in my pouch, and then I will have, like, a cooking knife, which, again, is like this. Like, it's thin, it's got a flat grind, it cuts vegetables well, and you can also, like, it's not going to do a great job filleting a fish, but it can. And you can skin an animal with this just fine. And so that's, like, my cooking slash hunting knife that I have with me out in the field. And again, carbon steel, wood handle, they're just the best materials, the most, e like, easily maintained and the most easily modifiable. If something happens and you need to modify the knife, you can, you know? And again, carbon steel holds the edge way longer. And leather sheath is generally the most durable material. Like, it's not going to crack or dent if you hit something too hard. It holds the knife pretty well. And it's just the nicest material to have around. It's soft. It doesn't clank around. It doesn't, like, make noise. It's pretty silent. If you're ever, like, playing red light, green light with the deer, I like to do that often. Like, if you're ever bored sometime and you see a deer, just start following it. And the key is, whenever it turns around to look at you, just stop moving. 
And then as soon as it turns around to keep walking, just follow it again and see how far you can follow the deer. Sometimes when I'm bored and I see a deer, I will just follow it a few miles through the woods just for fun on game trails. And you'll see a lot of cool stuff. And if you have a leather sheath, it's not going to make nearly as much noise. Per se, like Versus this thing makes all kinds of noise when I have it on my, my hip, like clanging around. Makes all kinds of noise. So if you're actually serious, like in the woods, I say get something with a wooden handle, carbon steel, leather sheath. That That's the trifecta for me personally. After years of experience, I've whittled it down to like a four inch blade. And again, previously mentioned criteria, wood, carbon steel, leather. I think that's just the best overall combination for a well-rounded woods knife. And honestly, one of these knives could do everything if you wanted it to. Like you could carve with it, you could cut with it, you could skin an animal with it, you could pretty much do everything you need to do with it. Like this knife, th these are the knives that are closest to being a jack of all trades knife that there is. I still have a fillet knife. Like when I, when I want to fillet a fish realistically, I still will use a fillet knife if I have it. But a lot of times I'm out with my friends and we catch a fish and we decide to eat it just by chance and I don't have a fillet knife on me. And then I use one of these. And it still does the job okay. And I think it's the closest to being a, a jack of all trades knife that there can be. So if you're really serious about it, I would suggest this because I think most people who actually spend real time in the woods, like beyond just having it as a hobby, and if it's just your hobby, there's nothing wrong with that either. But every person I've met who's also like as serious about being as outside as I am typically also has a knife that is similar at least, if not almost the same as this. Like it's typically always carbon steel, almost always has a wood handle, and almost always has a leather sheath. Not all the time, but like the majority of the time. And, it, and it's within like, a lot of people even like a little smaller. They'll have like a three inch knife. I prefer four. For me, that's like the magic number, but generally that is the most widely used woods knife I see and the most effective one falls in that range. If you're doing a lot of skinning and like game processing, some people like a six inch knife if you're doing it a ton. And like, but again, it depends on your purpose for the knife. But that's what I generally suggest. I think the sharpened crowbars are still very fun and definitely have a purpose. But if you're like serious about being in the woods, I don't think this does it that well. I think this is a good like fun knife. It's a good chopping knife. Like I still use this all the time when I'm in the woods and I'm trail clearing. But if I'm actually out there carving or, you know, filleting a fish or something in the woods, I generally, I'm, I'm bringing one of these. Now, to go into detail, Old Hickory, if you're looking for a budget knife, like if your budget is low, just go on eBay or Amazon and look up Old Hickory knife, and I suggest getting something with a sheath. Like if you're absolutely budget poor, and uh, I had it around here somewhere, there's the Kephart style one, there's like a five inch butcher knife that's pretty good. Um, get one of these if you, you know, really want to. There's also like plenty of, if you look up on eBay, eBay is a great place to get handmade stuff. I got this, this is a handmade knife by an old knife maker who no longer makes knives anymore. It's a Jeff, Jeff Sloyd knife, I think. It was, this was 40 bucks. It wasn't that expensive. And I have yet to find a good sheath for it. This one does okay, but it's a really nice knife and I use it all the time. And it wasn't that expensive. This one was expensive because I had it custom made for me with all the materials I requested. So this one was like $240, but this one was like 40. Like you can get plenty of decent knives and not spend all the money in the world on it. This one was like 90 bucks back in the day. And then the sheath was an additional 40 and I spent probably another 40 on this handle. And then I spent another like $10 on taking all the paint off of it. So this one's been quite an investment, but I love this knife. I've had it forever. And I'm very fond of it. And it still serves its purpose very well. Um, but again, I, I suggest going to like eBay if you want like a handmade knife, what I, which I would suggest honestly having a handmade knife. Not only is it like the only, like you have the only one like it, which I think is pretty cool. Because like as fun as it, ha as it is to have a classic knife, you'll meet like 10 other people with this knife, you know? It's, it's fun to have like a handmade knife that only you have. Like I'm the only person with any, with knives like this out there. You, you, there. No one else has knives like these. Like people have knives similar to these because this knife maker up here is very popular. 
but not quite like this. This combination doesn't exist anywhere else. And I, I just think that's fun. I think that's cool. Um, and I love it. Like, I absolutely love this knife. If I could only have one, it would be this one. 100%. But Old Hickory does just fine with what you might need it to do. And I think that's everything worth covering. I have a lot of other knives, but I've just... I bought most of them on a whim for fun, and I don't really think they need to be covered. But I think that's most of the criteria I try to keep in mind when knife buying, and that's... My years of experience boil down to that. That's what I would suggest. Like, you can buy a cheap knife, but I don't think it's gonna do very well. And again, I've never had one of those cheap ones last longer than like two years at a time. And I got really tired of that. Whereas a lot of these knives are still going strong. Like my skeletal tool, if I can find it. I've had my skeletal tool since 2020 or 2019, something like that. And it's still just as functional as the day I found it, you know? I've had this knife for like a year and a half now. Hasn't lost an ounce of its worth, you know? So I think investing is well worth it. That's generally what I try to keep in mind with all of my gear is I'd rather buy one thing that can do... Like, first off, don't buy super specialized stuff if you can help it. Don't buy, like, one thing that can only do one thing. Buy something that's fairly flexible, that can do, like, three things if you need it to. And put more money into it if you can afford it, because it's going to last you a lot longer. And it's going to perform a lot nicer, if you can afford it. If you're getting into the stuff on budget, again, there's plenty of budget options that exist. Um, but if you have the money, I say invest it. I think it's worth it. Especially if it's going to be a tool that you might use for the rest of your life. Like, I... I'm going to be using this as long as possible. Like, I don't intend to buy any other knives. I haven't in a long time. Like, this has been my main go-to knife for the past year and a half. And before that was a different knife that I used for a year. And the only reason I got this one is because I knew it would work better, for sure. And it has. Outperformed that other knife by miles. Anyway, I've already talked for far too long. That's my, you know, for what it's worth, that's what I think about knives after having obsessed over them for several years now. And, uh, I hope it's handy information for you guys. And, uh, I hope this YouTube thing works. We'll see. Oh, and, uh, if you have any requests for things you'd like to see or questions you want to ask, feel free, you know, to shoot. I'll, I'll try and answer them all or make a video whenever I can. Anyway, see you guys later.